Good evening and welcome to some Big Ten baseball on a Friday night here in West Lafayette in Indiana. Alexander Field, the site of tonight's contest, the first game of a three-game series this weekend between the Purdue Boilermakers and the Michigan State Spartans. Connor Hope, Corey Palm on the call with you tonight. And Corey, both these programs coming in, it's been a bit of a tough year in the win-loss column for both teams, but looking to try and build some momentum as they finish out the Big Ten slate and head into the offseason. That's right, Connor. Just a couple weeks left, three to be exact, in the regular season. Uh, the Boilermakers come in 17-26 and 26 overall, 6-8 and eight in the conference after taking last week out of conference, uh, an off week in Big Ten play. It had a had a series where they took two out of three from SEMO. Michigan State, meanwhile, 14-28, and 3-11 and in conference action, but better results of late. They've won five of their last seven, uh, took a game off Indiana, and uh, playing playing well, their 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 one loss in a series in Northwestern was a was a one point loss, a three to two loss. So, you know, this Spartan team is is feeling better about life right now and and looking for results this weekend. And you see the man on the mound for the Boilermakers, Trent Johnson. He's hoping to get Purdue off to a good start this weekend. Like you said, against an improving Michigan State offense. You look at the stats and the numbers. You know, this is a Michigan State team that has really struggled this season on offense, but like you mentioned, as of late, a little bit of a different squad coming down from East Lansing. Boilermakers in the same situation, though, really struggled out the gate, but have started to find themselves a little bit in a rhythm, and some of that starts with who we'll see in the bottom of the first inning, the leadoff man, Milo Beam. He's been on a tear for the Boilermakers, but really it's going to come down to can they get off to a good start with Trent Johnson on the mound? Absolutely. Trent Johnson comes in. You saw his numbers there, 3-2 and two on the year, uh, an ERA under 3. This is just his third start of the season. He's been big out of the pen most of the season, but uh, but performing very well. And Coach Mark Wazikowski has shuffled the weekend lineup, the weekend starters, quite a bit on the mound throughout the season. And uh, maybe, maybe just maybe, he's found his Friday night guy here in Trent Johnson. Yeah, and Purdue just trying to find some consistency in that lineup and that weekend rotation. Like you said, it's kind of been a revolving door all season long. So Johnson will will get the nod. The Boilermakers in the home whites tonight. We'll see Michigan State in their green tops, gray bottoms. Leading off for the Spartans, it's going to be the left fielder, Bryce Kelly. Kelly batting 313 on the season and has the power bat for this program. Four doubles for Kelly on the season. First one swung on, tipped foul, so will be first pitch strike for Johnson. Bryce Kelly, a junior from Rockford, Michigan. This is a homegrown lineup for the Spartans. A lot of Michiganders on their, uh, on their roster. Kelly fouls another one back into the wall, so an 0-2 count quick for the junior. And these are the types of counts that Trent Johnson wants to get into. He is, like most pitchers, much better when he's able to get ahead in the count and really work his stuff. For sure. And Johnson, 56 strikeouts on the season in uh, in 39 and two-thirds innings. That's uh, that's pretty pretty <laughs> remarkable. That's a really nice average. And Johnson, a guy last year, saw some time as a freshman, uh, ended up in the weekend rotation towards the end of the year, but primarily like this year has been a, been a bullpen guy. That one swung on, hit hard by Kelly, right back at Johnson. He'll glove it and underhand it to Everts for the first out. Really uh, showing off the leather there for was, was Johnson. <laughs> he can do a uh, little bit of everything out there. Glove saving a beauty on the mound. And excuse me, that's Justin Fugit out there at first base. Yeah, the Purdue defense, Owen Jansen at third, Tyler Powers at short, Ryan Howe at second, and Fugit at first. Zach Fasha behind the plate. Out in the outfield and right field, it's Cole McKenzie in center, Skyler Hunter, and then in left, Milo Beam. So a couple new faces out there for the Boilermakers, specifically Fugit and Beam. 
as this one swung on, hit down the first baseline in foul. The lights are already on, even though we're a couple hours from uh, from sunset here in West Lafayette. Just that kind of overcast day here in Indiana. Dan Chemileski in the box now for the Spartans, and he'll foul another one down the right field line. Chemileski making good contact. He needs to straighten him out. Chemileski, a senior, batting 186 on the season. but still a veteran presence in the lineup for the Spartans and with a 1-2 count facing against Johnson. Doing a nice job of staying alive. Yeah, hung in on that breaking ball. Just get a piece of it. Simuleski was trying to catch up to the fastball in the two previous. Mm -hmm. Well, and Trent Johnson's a guy who's going to put a lot of pitches in the strike zone. You know, he'll... Like you said, really change it up between that off speed and, and that fastball. Try to get batters on in defensive. This one swung on, hit hard. Almost fielded by Powers, but not able to get it. And it's going to be ruled a hit. So the first hit of the day goes to Dan Shimaleski. And that puts one on board for the Spartans. Good uh, good hit deep in the hole at Powers there. Tyler Powers did did well to get over and knock it down. But uh, even if he'd fielded it cleanly, I'm not sure he makes a play. So good call on that uh, ruling. Let's yeah, it would have been would have been a tough play for Powers to make it shortstop. So now Marty Bikina coming to the plate for the Spartans. Bikina also a senior, 272 on the year. Making his 41st start on the season. Take a look at his numbers there. Four home runs, 24 RBIs. That 24 RBIs leads the team. You know, one of three seniors in the lineup for the Spartans tonight. Runner going. Fastest throw is behind the runner, and one hops in there. So, stolen base for the Spartans. Yeah, good read by Shimaleski. Coming off the off speed from Johnson, and that's a tough throw for Fasha to make. Like you said, behind the runner. It is. You, you, you get a feeling they're going to test Fasha if, if they're having Shemaleski steal here in the top of the first. He's That's just his fourth stolen base on the season. So mm -hmm. Yeah, not not a huge steal attempt, but when you do have Bikina in it, at the plate and he leads the team in RBIs, you want to try to put a guy in scoring position. So a chance for the Spartans to take an early lead with a 2-0 count. And now a 3-0 count as that one misses just outside. Johnson trying to work around the edges, not make a mistake on Bikina. Royce Ando on deck. This Michigan State team has some power. Three different players with four home runs or more on the season. Any one of them would lead the Boilermakers. Yeah, big homers. Purdue only nine home runs as a team, so different styles of play. This Michigan State team a little more power based. Purdue much more speed and precision. Three one count for Johnson. And this one grounded softly to powers it short, and he'll fire it over to Fugit for the second out. More traditional play there for the Boilermaker shortstop. Yeah, a little bit easier to make as well. <laughs> so with two away and one man standing on second, we'll see Royce Ando step into the plate.
Ando hitting just under 300 on the year. 298 average, as you see there. 18 RBIs, one home run. And that one low. But Fascia able to grab it out of the dirt. Good work by Fascia there. Trent Johnson made the all-freshman team last year in the Big Ten. Good throw there on the off-speed. Evens the count at one. And it will be interesting to see with Johnson tonight just how deep he goes into this game. Like you talked about, he's been primarily a guy come out of the bullpen, throw for a couple innings, and then be the end of his night. And he's not somebody who in his career has been asked to go seven, six or seven deep as there's a swing and a miss from Ando. Ando. That said, he's, he leads the Big Ten in ERA right now with uh, point, 0 0.53 over the course of 17 innings in conference action. He's been hot. You certainly understand why Coach Wazikowski would give him the ball to start the game and say, go, go be you. And that one outside. So 2-2. Two, two. It's a really important series for the Boilermakers mm -hmm. who are currently, as we stand, uh, outside the top eight, which means they would not be invited to the Big Ten Tournament the season ended today. Michigan State at 3-13. and 13. Also not in the Big Ten top eight. Uh, but this, like you said, a big, big series for the Boilermakers as they will be here through Sunday and then they'll be on the road next weekend at Illinois and then back home to finish up against Ohio State before Start a Big Ten play, both Illinois and Ohio State. couple quality opponents to finish the year, so a three-game sweep of the Spartans would certainly put Purdue in a much more comfortable position trying to get into the Big Ten tournament. As Ando's going to hit this one over to Howe. Howe sliding grab, and he'll flick it over to end the inning. So one man on, one left at second for the Spartans, not able to capitalize on the base hit. We'll be back here in the bottom of the first from Alexander Field. Bottom of the first inning. The Boilermakers now to the plate. As Milo Beam, the leadoff hitter, is going to lay down a bunt, and that will roll foul. You mentioned a few minutes ago, Connor, how, uh, how much of a tear Milo Beam has been on. He's got an RBI in six straight games for the Boilermakers. He hit his first career home run. Uh, a week ago, uh, a towering shot to right field that uh, he admitted to me earlier this week. He thought he was popping out to right. He was pretty upset with himself until he saw it clear the wall. That's big of him to admit that he was uh, that he fully expected that just to be an out. I I would have not done the same thing. I would have told you, oh yeah, I knew. Oh I knew. yeah, I knew it right so off the bat. I knew that it was in. He it said, was, I put was my head down and started running. I was so <laughs> mad at myself. Okay, it was a windy night. <laughs> As he fouls another one to O2 Holt to Mason Erla, as you saw his numbers there on the mound, and he'll get his first strikeout of the afternoon as Beam waves at that one. But Erla, a mountain of a man at 6'4, the big righty hailing from Cass City, Michigan, getting the nod today. 12th start of the season for Erla. A 5 3 4 ERA. But off to a good start as now Ryan Howe comes to the plate and he will one pitch, one swing, and a second out. As coming over from third base, Zach Iverson. Yeah, the first two Boilermaker batters not, uh, not really making Erla work very hard for these with fouled off bunts and first pitch uh, ground outs. Uh, this is efficient, two outs and four pitches. 
Yeah, and then this has been the crux of Purdue's struggles this season. It's been on offense. They've not been able to consistently string together hits and, and strong at-bats. The one man who's been bucking that trend all year is at the plate right now, Skylar Hunter hitting 338 on the season. Yeah, Skylar Hunter is off to a has been has had a phenomenal year. Really being asked to to be in a, in a much different position than he was last year on a team that made the tournament. As that one's fouled off into the parking lot. Hunter nine doubles, five triples, and you're right. Uh, really in a leadership position this year. Able to be more of a just an everyday player last year. Now he's he's the veteran on the squad. Yeah, and, and everybody responds to that differently. All indications, you know, that he's he's embraced that challenge. But it can be difficult being new to a leadership position, especially in a year where the Boilermakers struggled. As that's a, an efficient quick inning for Erla as Hunter goes down swinging. So one, two, three, and... We are headed back to the bullpen. We'll be back top of the second, still scoreless here in Alexander Field. Welcome back, top of the second inning. Take a look at the Michigan State Spartans. An efficient defensive stand in the first inning for them as the Boilermakers are back out in the field. Trent Johnson getting ready to go. We take a look at the batting order for the Michigan State Spartans. You see. Casey Mays will be the first man up. Adam Proctor, Zach Iverson, the two to follow. Then Zayde Walker and Reese Trahey rounding out that starting lineup. This is a Michigan State team, like we said, coming into the game. Uh, has struggled a little bit on the offensive end, but they were able to get a hit in the top of that first inning, just weren't able to do anything with it. But opportunities, that's thats where you, you want to start at, especially when you're struggling on offense, is just getting guys on base. For sure, no matter how you have to manufacture them, and they, they got a single, they, they moved him to second on a stolen base, and and like you said, left him stranded, but, <clears throat> you know, it's got to start somewhere. Yep. Casey Mays will try and get it going here, four home runs, 10 RBI you see there for the freshman designated hitter. One of three freshmen in the lineup for the Spartans. Great crowd continues to trickle in here on a Friday night. With it being finals weekend, starting to see a little more life on campus as people emerge from their studying holes. <laughs> Made the mistake of trying to go out to lunch on Ooh, campus today. Big mistake. Yeah. We settled on our fifth option. <laughs> a lot of celebrating going on as finals wrap up. Yes. Yeah, I made the mistake of driving through campus today. <laughs> and what is routinely about an eight-minute drive took about 20. Yeah. A lot of frustrated parents just trying to get their kids from point A to point B moving out. A lot of people carrying mattresses down the street. A lot of mattresses. <laughs> If you're looking for a mattress and you're in the West Lafayette area, now would be a good time to swing by as the Hayes goes down swinging on the strikeout. Good job by Fasha staying with it, making the throw over to first, too, on the, the drop third strike. First K of the day for Trent Johnson. So now Adam Proctor will come to the plate. Proctor, seven home runs on the season. He's only got 15, excuse me, 15 runs, 14 hits. Hey, that's all you need. He, just, he is swinging for power. But he is a guy who Trent Johnson likes to face. You want somebody that is really going to try to reach back and clobber the ball. You can sometimes catch them with the off speed, but you got to be careful because if he... If you leave it in the zone, he will make you pay. He will. He's an all-or-nothing guy, though, because he also is uh, among the team leaders with 34 strikeouts. Well, you know, sometimes you're home run guys. That's that's true. When you're swinging for the fences, you don't always reach them. But he's a guy who, in this Michigan State offense, can change 
a game with one swing of the bat. As there's a good strike from Johnson to make it 1-2. That one in the dirt. Good block by Fascia. You know, Fascia, a guy coming in first year with the program in a tough spot because you, know, you think about the guy who's been behind the plate the last couple of years, Nick Delisandro, was so electric, huge arm, really came along offensively last year. So Fascia, it just does that's a tough role to fill, and uh, he's done a pretty admirable job this season. You know, doesn't quite have the arm strength that Adele Sandro had, but has been consistent on offense for the Boilermakers as well. He has been an important piece behind the plate and at first base. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Juco transfer in his first year here, like you say, uh, replacing a drafted player in, in Adele Sandro. And a guy that I think the coaching staff will feel like will continue to get better headed into his senior season and really be – a key piece to the puzzle in 2019-2020. In As this one rolls down first baseline and foul. Count stays 2-2. Two -two. You get pretty excited when you look at this pretty roster, like you say, looking towards 2020. Not to wish away the days, but there's only a couple seniors on this team, and it's a team that Boilermaker fans have seen get better mm -hmm. the, the the last month or so. Definitely improving. Well, you've talked about the Big Ten tournament. Is this one swung on, hit hard, but it's going foul? Yeah, he's got power. He does have power. It didn't even look like he really extended on that one. That just kind of – he just kind of pulled it as you see the swing before that, the foul down the baseline. He can hit it four feet. He can hit it 400 feet. Five-tool player. <laughs> I can hit it four feet. Me I, too. I can't hit it 400 feet. If you need somebody to to not get the ball outside of the circle, that would be me. <laughs> As that one's fouled back into the net. So he, doing a good job of battling here is Proctor. But going back to talking about, you know, for Purdue, for a program that's in a spot, you know, made the NCAA tournament last year, I think maybe people were hoping it just purely win-loss to see a little more results as Proctor is going to draw the walk as he got sh struck on the inside arm, it looks like, so he'll trot down to first base. But for Purdue, you know, you make the NCAA tournament last year. This year, a little bit of rebuilding. Year, you know, you lose a lot of quality pieces from last year's team, but you do feel like if they're able to find a way to get into the Big Ten tournament at the end of the season, and you look at the starting lineup, not a single senior in the lineup today, you know, the future is bright for this Boilermaker program. As Zach Iverson now steps in, 180 average on the season, only one home run, 12 RBIs. Iverson a sophomore. And she can stay with a base runner for the second straight inning. You look at their offensive lineup, they've got uh, a handful of guys in the starting nine that hit below 200. It's about getting those timely hits mm -hmm. uh, when they when they really matter, when they, they can actually affect some damage on the opposition. Well, it's the same thing. You know, you think back to the first inning, they're able to get a man on. They're able to steal a base, get to scoring position, but not able to, to convert from there. Mm -hmm. yeah, a good pitch from Johnson to make it 1-2. Yeah, good movement on the outside corner there. Both of these teams, similar approaches. 
stylistically, offensively. Not really power. Not going to overwhelm you with power. Not going to bomb the ball back to the wall. But they'll use small ball and they'll use the timely hits to, to generate enough runs to beat you. And if you're not disciplined, you know, both of these programs are very comfortable with being aggressive. This, uh, this Michigan State team scored 18 runs in the three-game series at Northwestern last weekend. Big swing, this one. Drifting foul and into the concourse. Count remains two and two. Spartans took two of three from the Wildcats up in East Lansing. Got a midweek win over Toledo, another midweek win. They put up 12 against the uh, Oakland Grizzlies on a week and a half ago. So things going well, and they've, they've been able to manage to, uh, to, to put some offense together the last two weeks or so. There's a hard hit ball to center field. Hunter will track it down and force Proctor to retreat back to first base. So two away, one man still on first. But yeah, you know, sometimes it just starts to click. You just start to find find a rhythm offensively. And this you look at this Michigan State team, they do have three seniors in the, the lineup, but there are a lot of freshmen and sophomores as well. It makes up five of the nine in the in the starting lineup and you know Mason Erla, also a sophomore, so a lot of youth for the Spartans as well. And like you mentioned earlier, Connor as well. Uh, you know, both teams got off to a rough start this year. The the Spartans started one and nine, that included losses at Coastal Carolina, who's a top twenty team, neutral side against uh, top twenty five NC State, a three game series at top twenty five Arizona State. They really faced the gauntlet to start the year, much in the same way the Boilermakers did with series at Texas and uh, Southern Miss to start the season. So when you're a younger team, when you're trying to feel yourself, you know, trying to feel things out and learn who you are, mm -hmm. starting in a hole can be very detrimental. Right. And uh, it can take a little bit of time to climb out of that. The, the goal for both teams is to play well in May. Yes. And uh, that's kind of where they're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And – there is learning to be done in, in losing, and, and coaches will tell you oftentimes that you can learn more in a loss than you can in a win. And so while nobody likes to get into that type of hole. Is that why I'm so smart? <laughs> I learned so doggone much? That must be what it is. As Zaheed Walker's going to go down swinging, and Johnson able to get out of the inning with – Another man stranded for the Spartans. We'll head to the bottom of the second. We're all tied up here at Alexander Field at zero. Bottom of the second inning. Take a look at the Purdue Boilermaking batting order. We're going to see Cole McKenzie, Bryce Bonner, Zach Fascia here to start the inning. And hopefully the Boilermakers have a little bit more success than they did against Mason Erla in the first frame. Eight pitches, two strikeouts for the sophomore from Cass City. That's that's efficiency. <laughs> that is. That's maybe uh, maybe the best inning of his collegiate career it right there. Be. It's, uh, it's a heck of a thing to get three outs in eight innings. Mm -hmm. or, excuse me, in eight uh, pitches, but much less to have two strikeouts. Boilermakers may be a bit too aggressive out there uh, in the bottom of the first. Cole McKenzie settle in and and give his team an opportunity to see what, what Earl is actually bringing. Yeah, I think that maybe they felt like, you know, the Boilermakers felt like they could jump out on Earl early and uh, give the righty credit. He he came in ready to mow him down and did through the first inning. McKenzie hitting 305 on the year. In the leadoff spot here in the second. As this one swung on and hit towards the gap, but it will be corralled by Bryce Kelly in left. Kelly took a bit of a flat line on that to he start did. with. I thought he might have got himself in some trouble, but uh, able to able to adjust to make the catch. So one away, but once again, another quick at-bat for the Boilermakers. Bryce Bonner now coming to the plate. 
Bonner yeah. batting 195 on the season, two home runs, 14 RBIs. Bonner's seen his playing time uh, tick up a little bit in the past three weeks or so, getting some starts behind the plate tonight. He's the DH for Purdue. Bonner, a part of that first ever recruiting class for Wazikowski. A junior guy from Texas that I think the Boilermakers have been pleased with his development here in his junior year as this one's hit hard but right to the glove of the second baseman, Royce Ando. First pitch. First pitch swinging was Bonner. They must look juicy. The they Boilermakers cannot lay off first pitches from, uh, from Erla. Well, if you wanted to put a positive spin on it, you've seen a couple hard hit outs. I mean, that's a good... That's good contact from Bryce Bonner. As you see the swing there, I mean, out maybe just a little bit in front of it, but if that ball is three or four feet one way or another, it's a base hit. He knew it, too. He was he was grinning the whole way back to the dugout. We'll bring up Zach Fascia. So Fascia is going to try to keep the Boilermakers out of their second consecutive 1-2-3 inning. At this point, Purdue would settle just going deep in the count. Mm-hmm. And on 13 pitches, six outs for the Boilermakers. Mason Earl dealing early as Purdue goes 1-2-3 again. Top of the fourth inning, Michigan State back to the plate. Got a defensive deadlock here in West Lafayette. Johnson and Erla going blow for blow on the mound as Trent Johnson fresh off the 1-2-3 inning coming back to the mound. You'd see the man, though, leading off. That's Marty Bikina. Bikina with a hard hit grounder right at Tyler Powers back in the first. There's a good pitch from Johnson. He gets Bikina out there looking for it. Nice fastball outside corner. This one swung on, hit about 130 feet into the air, and caught by Zach Fascia, back by the Purdue P. So the first out of the fourth inning on a pop-up to the catcher. You mentioned it, Connor. It, tough to get a read on that ball uh -huh. on these uh, sort of gray, off-white, cloudy sky. Seen, uh, we've seen both teams take a bit of a misstep in the outfield in the early going on fly balls. Now, nobody's made a, an error yet. And then Fasha did, did well to stay on that one. Well, you'd have to imagine that on a day like today, just the familiarity with the ballpark gives the Boilermakers a, a slight edge. Is that one a little low? From Johnson evens the count at one. Still, Trent Johnson has been efficient through the last two innings. Hasn't, hasn't given up anything really too hard hitting, but he did use a lot of pitches to get through the first two or three innings and has now been a lot better about just getting some swing and miss stuff out there. He is. He's throwing strikes. He's, he's keeping the, uh, the Spartan offense a little bit off balance with changing pace, changing location. Changing level. So now Ando's got a 1-2 count going against Johnson. And this one swung on, fouled off down the first baseline. Three strikeouts so far for Johnson. We talked about Johnson is a high strikeout guy. 56 strikeouts coming into this outing and only 39 and two-thirds innings of work I mean that's that's imp those are impressive numbers they are he's won he's he's earned wins in his last three decisions his last three outings the last one coming last weekend he went five and two-thirds against uh, Southeast Missouri State and you would think that 
given just the amount of pitches he had to use to get through the first couple innings, Coach Wazikowski and company would be ecstatic if they could get him into the fifth inning before having to go to the pen, as this one's flipped over to second base on the ground for the second out. How stayed on that, didn't rush the throw. That's the second time we've seen Johnson go outside with that fastball and really just get that awkward extension from the Spartans. You can see just really just trying to get a piece of the bat on it was Ando. Kind of diving at that ball. As there's a big swing from Casey Mays. High heat there and a big swing if those two connect. The ball might still be fall, uh, flying over toward Folk Field. Another swing and a miss from Mays. Mays does have some power. Four home runs on the year. Freshman from Wichita, Kansas. He's also already struck out once tonight. <laughs> well, like we said, sometimes when you're swinging, when you're taking those healthy cuts, you don't always make make contact. But that's also, you know, the progression of a freshman. Definitely. You just have to learn when when it's best just to try to put the ball in play and, and when you can try to knock the cover off of it. And this one swung on, hit deep into left field and to the warning track, past Milo Beam for a hit. Be a stand-up double for Mays. Third double of the year for Mays. That one was perfectly placed. If Skylar Hunter and Milo Beam can't catch up to it, it's perfectly placed. Perfectly placed. Two very speedy defenders for the Boilermakers. That one right in the gap at the wall. Good hit by Mays. Yeah, you don't see too many balls out in left field to get past the rangy beam, but that one able to get down and safe in the warning track, dirt. So now Adam Pro Adam Proctor coming to the plate. Take a look at the cut there from Mays. Good job. He did not let off the gas nope, he for was, one second. He was rounded and, and headed to second. No second thoughts. As that one misses the mark against Proctor. This is a dangerous spot, though, for the Boilermakers. Proctor, we've talked about, has that power. Has seven home runs on 14 hits this season. Proctor was hit in the elbow by a 2-2 pitch his first time up. He's left stranded back in the second. Really nice change up there from Johnson at the knees. And this is this is one of those guys that the scouting report, even though the numbers, you look at the batting average, it's nothing that you're, you would jump off the page, but you talk about the power. This is a guy you have to respect when he's at the plate because if, if you throw something in where he can go get it, he'll he'll put that ball. Make you pay. Yeah, yeah, he'll put that ball up over the fence. And in a game that has the feel of being a defensive battle, a two-run home run could be the decider. So a 2-1 count for Proctor. See May standing there at second. That one in the zone from Johnson evens the count at two. Generous strike there. That one looked a bit low from, from my vantage point, but Johnson gets the call and The Boilermaker defense, meantime, trying to confuse Casey Mays out at second base with their coverage of second. Powers is sending signals to the pitcher, then backing off. And that one hit over to the Michigan State dugout. I think Tyler Powers is uh, hamming it up a little bit there with the signals. Maybe just a little bit. Some <laughs> gamesmanship being played by the sophomore in, shortstop. Enjoy the moment. He's feeling good. He's got a hit. It has. They try to get the pick play on Mays, but Mays able to get back down in time. And Johnson just opts just to pull it down. 
It was a, it was a sneaky little move. Smart decision, I think, by Johnson to, to not make that throw. Two and two. He'll focus on the batter now. And this one swung on, hit hard into center field. And Skylar Hunter will get underneath it. But that was a, a big-time swing from Proctor. However, the Spartans leave another man stranded as we head to the bottom of the inning. Still tied at zero. Bottom of the fourth inning, Milo Beam leading off for the Purdue Boilermakers. Got a fun one here tonight in Alexander Field. Tied up at zero, some Big Ten baseball on BTN Student U. Getting you into the weekend. Take a look, Beam strike out in the first inning. It was a part of a, an efficient first go around through the starting lineup for Mason Erla. Good contact on uh, first pitch, but again, it's first pitch swinging by the Boilermakers. And the Boilermakers have had good contact at times. They just haven't been able to put the ball in play. And there's another one that uh, maybe a reluctant swing from Milo Beam. He, he committed to it, then regretted it. That ball low and away. Good pitch. And that one he is able to check it. But still, you can see Orla has, has got Milo Beam all sorts of confused up there on the mound. Beam a junior out of Westfield, Indiana. That one up and out of the zone. Evens the count at two. That one swung on back into the net by Beam. So Milo Beam doing a nice job now of battling. And this is what we did not see the Boilermakers do from, from much of the starting lineup was just force Erla to, to throw some pitches and at least battle into some of these counts and, and get his pitch number up. Called strike three on the inside corner. Beam not real uh, happy with that. We've seen that call made. Both times. ways tonight. Yep, a couple times. That that strike zone I think is a little more inside than what both teams that were expecting. But like you said, the consistency. The consistency is all you can ask for. And uh, our head umpire tonight, Jim Shaley, he's been consistently calling that a strike as Ryan Howe comes to the plate now. That was the third strike out of the day for Erla. Erla's last start, last Friday night, he went seven at Nor or excuse me, against Northwestern. Gave up seven hits, three runs. As this one going over to Zaid Walker for the second out. It's another long, lazy fly ball into the outfield for the Boilermakers. So now Skyler Hunter will come back to the plate. Skyler Hunter struck out in his last at-bat. Trying to keep this inning alive for the Boilermakers. First pitch outside called ball for Erla. Back-to-back -back balls make it a 2-0 count. So favorable count now for the junior in Hunter. And he'll swing at that one, foul it back into the net. Just underneath it. Erla, remember the all-freshman, Big Ten all-freshman team last year as well. Is a guy that the coaching staff is very excited about his future in East Lansing. 
giving you a glimpse of why that's the case tonight. He has been terrific through three and two-thirds innings. And he gets the strike there to make it a full count. Good pitch. Skyler Hunter able to stay alive. Erla has gone five innings or more. Nine out of 11 starts this season. As this one's on the ground, fielded and not able to make the catch over at first base. That is Reese Trahey. Now, that throw was a little low coming in from Bikina. It was. It one hop from Bikina. It looked like it would have been in time if Trey had been able to make the grab. Yep. It will be a throwing error on the shortstop. So but Bikina tagged with the error. Now some life, though, for the Boilermakers. A chance to extend the inning. As the, I mean, you see, that's why... Boys and girls at home, you just continue to hustle it out even when you think it's a sure out because you just never know what might happen. Give credit to Skylar Hunter as Cole McKenzie flew out back in the second inning. First swing on that strike. With that, Skylar Hunter has now reached safely 32 consecutive games in Big Ten play over the course of his career. Walk, air, hit, doesn't matter. Skyler Hunter gets on base. He finds a way to do it. Nothing and two on McKenzie very quickly. I believe it was his freshman year last year, two years ago, that he led the country for a while and hit by pitches. I mean, he was a guy who just, he'll find a way to get on base. It doesn't have to be sexy. It doesn't have to be glamorous. That's how you score runs. Mm-hmm. Right now, Cole McKenzie trying to do his best to put some runs on the board for the Boilermakers. He flew out to left field his first time up. As this one's thrown over to first, keep Hunter in check. Hunter dove back into the bag there, probably didn't need to. He in no danger of really being picked off there. Might as well get dirty. Yeah, well. That one outside, 2-2 two -two now. Scholar Hunter does have some speed, 4-6 of six on stolen base attempts this season. And that one outside as well. So another full count for the Boilermakers. Erla may be starting to lose command a little here in the bottom of the fourth. Still only 40 pitches so far. Bryce Bonner up on deck as that's going to be a walk. So Cole McKenzie will take his base. And so now runners on first and second for the Boilermakers. Still two away. Bryce Bonner coming to the plate with an opportunity to break the stalemate. Bonner's got a little, a little bit of pop in his bat too. He had, uh, he's got a couple home runs here at Alexander Field this season. In his first at bat, he had a hard line out to second. He's going to try to put that same type of swing on the ball. Upstairs, so all of a sudden, like you said, Mason Erla struggling to find the zone a little bit. And this is a tough one because Bryce Bonner, uh, 
is very generously listed at five nine. He is. So not a big, not a big strike zone. As that one's up as well. May not be the tallest dude out there, but he, like you said, he packs a punch when he's able to, to make contact. Zach Fasha on deck with two away. And this one swung on, hit towards left center, and Shemleski will come away with it. So the Boilermakers were able to put two on, but not able to get anybody across the plate. We stay tied at zero. Leading off for Michigan State left fielder, number 17, Bryce Kelly. Top of the sixth inning, the top of the order now for the Spartans. Bryce Kelly coming back up. He's 0 for 2 today. Trying to get Michigan State off to a good start here in the top of the sixth. There's Trent Johnson coming back out on the mound. Been a fun one between these two starters tonight. Trent Johnson has done a nice job for the Boilermakers so far. Only two hits given up, four strikeouts through five innings. Got the 0-2 count quickly on Kelly. And this is why they, they really like this kid out of Crawfordsville. You know, they really feel like he's a guy who, who can do a lot of different things within the lineup. He can be a bullpen guy, but he's shown that he can, he can come out and give you five or six innings as a starter as well. Yeah, third straight quality start for Johnson. He went five and two thirds. His last start, last Friday night, he went six full against Rutgers the week before. Those were both wins. Two hits by the Scarlet Knights in those six innings. Back-to-back to back pitches to the outside, even the count at two. And this is where you do start to see the fatigue. You know, Trent will lose that control on that fastball a little bit. Standing in 2-2. Holes wave that one off trying to stay alive in the at-bat. Been a tough afternoon or evening for Bryce Kelly so far. Yeah, 0 for 2. He struck out his last time up. Grounded out to first to lead the game off. He coming in, the only... Spartan batter hitting over 300 in the lineup. We kind of in the same situation as a um, really a Skyler Hunter, kind of that that old head on the team that has has been the the main engine of the offense. You know, if you're the Boilermakers, if, you know, if you would tell Coach Wazikowski, hey, your your ace is gonna really be good against the front end of this lineup. And you'd feel pretty good about where you're at. And that's what Purdue's at right now. Yeah, the first four in the Spartan lineup. One for eight on the day. There's this one. Foul back into the net. Once again, another deep at bat for the Spartans. He's forcing Trick Johnson to use some pitches. This one, get out into left. Milo Bean will drift over to corral it for the first out. Good battle there by Johnson to stay in that in that at bat. Center fielder number to 21, fly ball. So now Shemaleski will come back to the plate. Shemaleski's one for two. And as you take a look at. Disappointed Bryce Kelly. I think he knew that that was a big, big opportunity for him to, to try and get the Spartans off to a strong start here in the sixth inning, especially because they know that Johnson's starting to show some, some fatigue. It's 
one thing to have your best stuff when you're fresh. Right. It's another thing to battle when you're not fresh. When you don't have your best stuff, you can still get out, still throw strikes, still retire batters. That's that's sort of the next level, the next step for a guy like Trent Johnson. Well, and that's that's that mindset that this coaching staff's trying to instill, not just in the in the pitching, but also just on the, in the team in general. You know, you've got a lot of young guys that you have to learn how to battle when it's cold out, or when you're not hitting the ball well. As Shemaleski's going to be able to get one down in the gap, out into the outfield for a base hit. Two for three now on the deck. Shemaleski continues to have a strong senior season. And so now that will bring up Marty Aquino. As you see the swing there from Shimaleski. So there's action still in the bullpen for the Boilermakers. It'll be interesting to see just how long Johnson's allowed to go, especially if he gives up another base hit here. They don't go ahead and just make the call with one away. Jimmy's going to go 0 for 2 on the day. Chimileski does have a stolen base to his name back in the first inning. Well, like you said, Bikina, part of this top half of the lineup that has really struggled against Johnson today. Johnson's going to throw one over to Justin Fugit at first just to make sure that Shemaleski is aware of what's going on. You mentioned that he's got that steal. I guarantee Trent Johnson remembers that as well. Yes, I'm sure that he remembers that. There he goes. Pitch out. And they will get him for the second out. Excellent job by the Boilermaker Battery on the communication for that pitch out. Yeah, the perfect time for a pitch out there. It's, they had a feeling Shemaleski was going to try and test uh, Fascia again. This time, standing up, perfect strike down to second base for the out. Yeah, great throw from Zach Fascia. So now two away with an 0 1 count, and all of a sudden, Makina goes from trying to advance his teammate into scoring position to just trying to stay in the inning. It's just the second time shimaleski has been caught stealing this season. And you see, you know, that play maybe breathes a little bit more wind into the sails of Trent Johnson. Start to feel better about yourself. Instead of trying to get two outs, now it's just, just need the one. Just worry about the batter, and there's a... And there's a slow roller to Powers at shortstop, and there's the third out. So Trent Johnson, clean sheet through six as we stay tied, headed to the bottom of the inning here in Alexander. Bottom of the sixth inning, the pitcher's duel continuing as Trent Johnson with another impressive showing in the top of the sixth. Mostly because of this excellent communication between him and Zach Fascia to get Dan Chmielewski Stealing at second, you see another great angle there on the tag. And that's just great communication by the Boilermakers. And that was really kind of the, the turn the tide in that sixth inning. Because you feel like if Michigan State can get him in in scoring position, starting to see Johnson get a little tired out there on the mound. But that was the, the boost that he needed to at least get through the sixth. So now Milo Beam coming back to the plate for his third attempt tonight. He'll lay down a bunt, and he'll go foul. Mason Erla out here still continuing to deal for the Spartans. Only 66 pitches. Looking like he's still fairly fresh and probably has another inning, if not two more, in him. He's, he's used to going deep, and he's had success against the Purdue leadoff hitter Milo Beam. Struck out swinging in the first, struck out looking in the fourth. And with this being the third time through the lineup, you would think that being a veteran player in this program, they try to be a little more patient. And there are two good takes from the junior. 
That was near the inside corner that sent him down looking the last time up. So a little bit, uh, a little bit gutsy to take that pitch. And there's a good swing, and a, but a miss. And we've seen that time and time again out of the hand of Erla. He's, he's throwing something up there that the Boilermaker batters like, but they have not been able to get a whiff of it. This one's fouled back into the parking lot. Now remains two and two. Nobody out, nobody on. And that one. Foul tipped into the glove of Proctor, so that will do it for Milo Beam. As you see, just not able to get on it. Three straight K's for Beam today. Way to forget for Beam in the left field. There's baseball to be played, so who knows? Ryan Howe now steps in. He's over two. And the house had a couple of nice swings just to hit two long fly balls into the outfield. And there's another aggressive swing from the junior. Excuse me, the freshman. from Mount Prospect, Illinois. Prospect High School. As that one off the glove of Erla, but not enough of a deflection from the big righty to prevent the out for the boy. The second baseman. Uh, uh, able to still make the out. So two away. And Skyler Hunter coming back to the plate trying to keep the inning alive for the Boilermakers, was able to stay alive in his last at-bat thanks to a throwing error from the Spartans. Although I think that he would tell you that's not his plan here. He'd like to try and get something solid. And then they around to second that inning before uh, before the inning was over. Stranded in scoring position. Three Boilermakers left on base today. Some action in the Spartan bullpen now. Both teams starting to try and get their relievers warmed up as we head towards the latter stages of tonight's contest. In the final third of the game, every Single mistake is magnified simply because you're running out of opportunities to make up for them. That's a good take by Hunter to make the count 3-1. And now you start to wonder, you know, similar to Johnson with Erla, you know, how many hits do you have to see before you decide that you're going to go away from him? And right now there's really no reason to do so as there's a swing and a miss from Hunter. Absolutely. He's... He's got five strikeouts on the on the night. His season high is seven. He's approaching that. He's fully in control. Just one hit surrendered. It's been an impressive outing. Good battle here by Hunter. Gets a piece of that one. Count remains full. That one fouled back by Hunter. And this is what you have to do. You just have to continue to battle and stay alive. Keep fighting up the pitches you don't like until you find one you do. Yep. This is something that Purdue did not do early in the contest. And is that one also foul tip into the concourse. And that dashes on for that baseball. Always enjoy you see the kids scrambling for the ball. You see the adults trying to protect the craft beer on craft beer night. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Everybody's got their priorities. <laughs> so full count for Hunter. And that one swung on hit to Ando at second, and that'll do it. So the Boilermakers, another 1-2-3 inning as Erla continues to deal for the mound for the Spartans. So far through six innings of play, we're tied up at zero here in West Lafayette. 
We head to the seventh scoreless here at Alexander Field. Uh, the Boilermakers and the Michigan State Spartans. And the pitchers duel. Four hits combined for both teams through six innings. And it'll be Roy Sando leading things off for Michigan State here in the seventh. Trent Johnson remains on the mound for the Boilermakers. Johnson has been money here through six. And starts off with a strike on Ando. It's been a fun matchup between these two pitchers. Two different styles. A little bit, you know, different deliveries, but both these guys have, have done a phenomenal job. Both doing a really good job of, of working ahead of the count, starting off with strikes. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, like you said, it's just they've been really good with their, their placement. They've consistently kept both you know the batters off of off balance just the entire time both teams and you know neither team's really been able to get a read and we've seen with both of them the last inning or two getting to uh you know a little bit of adversity and facing it facing off winning the battle and you know in the long view these are two sophomores you know both coaching staffs you, you love to see that from the young guys As there's a strikeout on the swing and miss from Ando. So Johnson looking as fresh as he did in the first inning on that, that bat. That was the 100th career strikeout for Trent Johnson. Looking at number 33. He's the seventh Boilermaker to reach the century mark in K's as a sophomore. He might not be the only one to do it this year. He might not be, but he will be the only one to do it tonight as that 100 strikeout will do it for the sophomore sensation. Matt Moore will be coming to the mound for the Boilermakers, but we're going to step away. Still tied at zero here in the top of the seventh on BTN Student U. Well, Trent Johnson with a historic milestone tonight, 100 stri career strikeouts for the sophomore, and he will be replaced by that man right there, Matt Moore, making his 21st appearance on the year. A 3-4-8 ERA. We're going to try to add to that strikeout total and keep the Boilermakers gridlocked in what's been a really fun contest tonight. And we thank everyone for joining us on BTN Student U. Connor Hope, Corey Palm on the call. So with one away, Matt Moore coming to the plate, and he will see a new man up to bat. And that is Nick Vaqueo for the Spartans. So Mays was due up for Michigan State. And Mays, one for two with a double tonight, and they give him the hook for Lakeo. Lefty righty matchup. And that one swung on, foul down the third base lineup. You get the lefty righty matchup. You also got the battle of the flow, though. Corey. That's true. Both the impressive heads of hair on Matt Moore and Nick Lakeo. Okay, hitting 222 on the year. Five RBIs, no home runs. Just trying to get the Spartans a leadoff hit. And that one swung on, hit hard, but right to first. If you get waving off Matt Moore, he'll do it himself. And so now two what? Man, Matt Moore busted it to get all the way over there, and then he gets waved off. In, <laughs> Matt maybe does is playing it off, here, but you know he's probably he's a little, a little, yeah, he's a little annoyed. You're just gonna take it yourself. Didn't have let, to let run me know. Over here. Yeah, yeah, didn't have to run over here. He'll tell coach he got his running in. There you go. Get, <laughs> just getting his steps in. Adam Proctor coming to the plate now. Proctor 0 for 1. He got hit back in the second. Fans that one off. Proctor not afraid to take aggressive hacks at it. You mentioned Trent Johnson, 100th career strikeout, the seventh sophomore to do so. His uh, classmates, Andrew Baum and Bo Hostra, could both reach that mark this season as well. They are both at 88 strikeouts for their career. Baum projected to start either tomorrow or Sunday. And uh, Bo Hostra obviously is a tremendous closer 
for the Boilermakers. Bo's going to need a lot of innings to get. Uh, to Bo's going to have to. Bo's going to have innings. to close. Yeah, close a lot of games. Yeah, another good strike there from Matt Moore. More two and zero in Big Ten play. This is his sixth appearance in conference this year. More another young, young arm out of the bullpen. Also only a redshirt sophomore from Avon, Indiana. Went to Avon High School as an Oriole. But is, an, but is another guy in this bullpen that the, that the coaching staff's really, really high on, man. They really like his potential. Redshirted last year. And he'll get the strikeout to end the inning. So Proctor goes down looking. And Matt Moore comes in, picks up right where his teammate Trent Johnson left off. So through six and a half to play, or six and a half innings, the Boilermakers, the Spartans, tied up at zero. It just feels like one of those games where it will just depend on who's who's able to strike first. As you see, the uh, Michigan State Spartan bullpen not exactly. Are they playing a hacky side? They might be. They, it's been an easy <laughs> night for the Spartan bullpen, but. When the young man from Cass City is dealing like he is, you might as well just go ahead and throw the blinders on, get yourself a quick nap. 83 pitches through six innings for Erla. Five Ks, two walks, one hit. The final numbers on Trent Johnson, by the way. Six and a third, he scattered three hits. Struck out five, walked to none. And then he pitches 70 of them for strikes. Impressive showing from the sophomore from Crawfordsville. And now he will sit in the dugout hoping that his team can come through on the offensive end and, and earn him the W. First pitch to McKenzie, misses upstairs. Second one misses in the basement. And this is where you start to wonder about the lack of activity in the bullpen. We have seen Earl get a little loose with his placement. And while the Boilermakers haven't been able to take advantage of it, all it takes is, is one swing in order to do so. And you, you look at the lineup right now, you, Cole McKenzie, Bryce Bonner, Zach Fascia, those three guys all have pop. If you're going to get a home run from this lineup, it's probably going to be one of those three. Right. McKenzie did one. He walked his last time up on four pitches. He thought he won now. He, was, he thought he had it there. <laughs> that ball, that bat was almost out of his hand. Joe Shaley behind home plate, calling balls and strikes tonight. Catches the inside corner as well. A good strike there, Marla. But we've seen this from Mason Earl a couple times now, Corey. You know he he gets. You get a hit behind in the count, and you feel like, okay, this is maybe where he starts to come apart, and then all of a sudden it's bang, bang, two strikes, and he's right back in it. And now all of a sudden you've got Cole McKenzie hitting line fly balls into the parking lot. Going after that same car. There's a white sedan in the front row of the parking lot that these guys are mad at. It's, yeah, it's that, and it's that. It's like maybe a... Great compact as McKenzie will finally be able to draw the walk. And so now a little bit of throwing from the bullpen of the Spartans. Nothing too strenuous. Number standing in first, Bryce Bonner. Bonner, 0 for 2 today with a fly out in the fourth. Got a line out back in the second. I mean, McKenzie's six for eight on the base pass this year. Bonner trying to lay down the bunt. And McKenzie has some speed. And this is a classic squeeze bunt situation for Coach Wazikowski. They love to try and just put the ball down and make the defender make a decision.
as this one's pulled back by Bonner. Even the count at one. Nice choice there by Bonner. That ball came in ankle high. And this one had the hit and run on. But Bonner not able to get a piece of it. Fouls it back. So now 90 pitches for Erla. base, but McKenzie back well ahead of the throw. Bonner's going to square it. I think he's going to bunt. And he's going to do so. And it is. Stays, stays fair, I think, much to the shock of everyone, including Bryce Bonner. Yeah. As he's laughing, headed back down to the, the dugout. But Exactly what the Boilermakers wanted to do, a dangerous play. Throwing the bunt down. One two pitch. One two count. It pays off as now Fasha has a man in scoring position. He put Reese Trahey in a real tough spot there. Trahey could have let that one go foul. If he had Bond would probably be standing on first if it stayed fair. Uh, he had to play it. And it was about two inches inside the line when he did so. So we talk about the timely hitting. One more time, we have an opportunity for Zach Fasher right now with one out and a man on second. Only few get on deck. Fasher leads the team with two home runs and 26 RBI this year. He's been a guy who has provided pretty good power from that catching position. Side. Definitely playing this one uh, pretty safe. He's early. Don't want to make a mistake the fashion. You're going to give up a hit, make him earn it. Yeah, it is fascinating to me, Corey, that I look back down at the bullpen and it looks like, well, maybe there's going to be a little bit more action now, but still, really nothing for the Spartans. They feel very comfortable right now with Mason Earl out there on the mound. The outfield is in a few paces. This is one of those situations where the lack of power for the Boilermakers can be an issue because they haven't even really been able to hit the ball out to like the warning track and, and allow McKenzie to move up from second to third. So with the 2-1 count, one away, man standing on second. Step off there from Erla. As McKenzie retreats back to second base. There again, I don't think they're anticipating McKenzie to steal third, but they got to keep him close to keep him from going home on a hit to the outfield. Anything fair and into the outfield is going to more than likely bring him home as close play there at second base but McKenzie in underneath the tag. I like that Erlo waited an extra beat there and McKenzie was actually leaning toward third. Mm -hmm. As Fasha is going to line another one foul. Stays 2 2. Fasha continuing to battle. Arguably the best scoring opportunity the Boilermakers have had tonight. With only one out and a man on second. 
throw over to second base. Tag not in time, though. What is making McKenzie think over there? This one is fouled back as well. So Fasha just continue into battle. He's chasing a little bit. He's behind these, pe uh, these pitches from Erla. Erla, even though that was the 95th pitch he's thrown tonight, still thrown with decent speed. One hit, five strikeouts, three walks for the sophomore tonight. This one gonna stay foul as well. And it'll be interesting to see here what does Michigan State do. Earl has been been solid. He's been phenomenal tonight. It's, yeah, it, it, hard to say he's made any mistakes. It, if if he has, it's been a couple. What you don't want, it, it, you know, this is the conundrum that every pitching coach, every manager faces in baseball. You don't want to leave a guy out there one pitch too long. One right. mistake decides this game, potentially. So they're going to go with Erla. Whatever he said convinced his coaches that uh, he's good. And they will leave floor in the uh, bullpen for the moment. And I think that this also, you know, as a pitching coach, you, you have to weigh, well, how much do you trust Evan Floor to be able to come in and get two outs in this situation. Do you feel like even though he's tired, Erlis still has been dealing tonight. Does he have just enough left to maybe put Floor in a better situation? That one's out. So a full count. So tried to get Fasha to chase that one a little bit. Well, Fasha's fouled off three straight pitches, so he's in the mind of swinging. Good, Good eye to stay off that one. Terrific dis discipline from fashion. And this one swung on, hit hard into right field. Walker's chasing it. It's out of here. A two-run shot from Zach Fasha puts the Boilermakers on top in the seventh inning. Just a monster holder into right fashion's third of the season. RBI 27 and 28 to the Boilermakers. With a 2 0 lead, there was that one pitch, that one mistake, and Zach Fashion made him pay fully. The Boilermakers have been swinging with confidence all evening, and finally Fashion's able to get the bat squarely on the ball, and he blasts that one out over the right field wall, and the Boilermakers take the late lead. And so now Justin Fugit comes to the plate. Base is cleared, one out. And a whole new ball game. Fugit walked his last time up, hits a sharp line drive, caught on the fly there by Trahe. Yeah, B team st standout type catch there from Reese Trahe, able to dig that out of the dirt. Not the shoelaces. Two away. So now Tyler Powers will come to the plate with two away. The Boilermakers on top. Just the 10th team home run for Purdue this season. But coming at a critical moment. Well hit ball just over the 368 mark in right field. Zaid Walker gave chase, but I think he knew. I think, I think he knew too. As this one swung on, hit over to the shortstop, and once again, Trey, he cannot make the stretch to get it. Another short hopper in from shortstop, but that's going to be a hit. Hold a hit as you see it. the replay, Zach Fascia all over it. And Walker. Really just giving up. He knew it was gone. Play of the game so far for Zach Fasha in the Boilermakers. As now Owen Jansen will come to the plate with 
one man on. And two outs. Interesting, Erla still out there now for the Spartans as this one's thrown over the first. The power's back in time. It's hard to believe that was just the second base hit of the day for the Boilermaker offense, that, uh, that home run to right by Fascia because the hit by Powers just now, the third hit, uh, that infield single. Well, and that's the frustrating thing if you're Mason Erla is you're going to go back and look at the sheet and Right now, you've given up three hits. One of them could have very easily been an out, and the other ends up being potentially the deciding factor right now. Absolutely. It being a two-run two, two run shot. And Erla knows for heartbreak this year. He uh, has pitched very well on multiple occasions to, to see no support from, uh, from his offense. Only to fall short. So now Jansen with a chance to extend the inning and the lead for the Boilermakers. Over to first base. And Powers back in again. Tyler Powers getting night. All white uniform, nice and dirty. To make that equipment staff uh, earn their Earn their paychecks here tonight. Yep. So two outs, 1 0 count, 2 0 count now. Johnson lets that one go high. And they're now approaching 110 pitches on the night. Continuing to let him work, which is an interesting choice. You wonder maybe just because it is a three-game series, try to keep the bullpen as fresh as possible for tomorrow. As this one is up in the air, going to just get out of the infield, and it will be caught by Bikina to end the inning, but not before the junior catcher, Zach Fasha with the two-run blast over the right field wall to put the Boilermakers on top. We head to the top of the eighth. Two up, two nothing. Top of the eighth inning, if you are just joining us, you have missed all the excitement happening <laughs> in the bottom of the seventh. It's been a fun pitcher's duel, but finally the Boilermakers breaking through with the two-run home run from Zach Fascia to break the stalemate. And so now Matt Moore returns to the mound, this time with a two-run lead. Looking to try and Inch the Boilermakers closer and closer to another Big Ten victory. A couple defensive changes for the Boilermakers. Evan Albrecht enters at shortstop. Tyler Powers moves over to third. And Owen Jansen's day appears to be done. Matt Moore remains on the bump. It was good relief for Johnson to finish the seventh. But we'll see what he's got here. Big Bo Hostra up and working in that bullpen for the Boilermakers. And that one evens the count at one for more. Zach Iverson up to lead off the inning for the Spartans. And he will hit that one down the third base line and it is drifting off of the roof of the indoor hitting facility for the Boilermakers. Bit of wind kind of blowing inwards now. Ever so faintly. And as this one's on the ground over to Ryan Howe, and he will clean it up for the first out. It's the 21st appearance of the season for Matt Moore. He's now gone a full inning. And this is certainly for Purdue. You know, they would love for more to get him through the eighth, and then they can bring Bo out in the ninth and finish this off. 
Austria leads the team with five saves on the year. Fly ball in foul territory. Oh, oh my goodness. That looked like that might have caught a piece of a fan there in the stands. Looked like she got a bad read on it. it did look like she got a bad bad read, maybe not a read on it. Everybody appears to be okay. Mm -hmm. Somehow. Alright. So we continue on. 0-1 count. Walker at the plate. And this one put into play. Albrecht charging up to make the play, and he will do so. My, my, my. He's lucky that uh, Zach Everts is a tall man over there first. That was a rise ball on that, on that throw from Albrecht. Two away. Well, it looks like Evan wasn't able to field it as cleanly maybe as he would have liked. And he knows the speed of Walker trying to just get it out quickly. If he was able to stand up there and make the grab. My mistake. I said, I said Everts. That's definitely Justin Fugit. It has been all game. That's all right. I opened the game with it being Nick Everts, so we're even now on there that. There we go. Apologies to Justin Fugit. And it's a good thing because he's four inches taller. <laughs> Fugit made the catch for the Boilermakers. I don't know that Everts would have. Very true. As Reese Trahey now in at the plate with an 0-1 count. Moore continuing to work. Nope. Another good pitch from Matt Moore. You can tell he's he's feeling good. Yeah, as you see this one here, and it I mean it's a tough play, and it, it just looks like maybe it wasn't a clean field from Albrecht, but like you said, if you get able to go upstairs, grab that off the top shelf. And outside trying to get Trey Heat to chase. That was a nice pitch from Moore. I'm not sure how Trey Heat laid off it. I've been impressed with Matt Moore in the, in the outing today. Another guy that as he continues to get better, you just start to feel more comfortable with the bullpen if you are Coach Wazikowski. First, first year pitching coach, Elliot Kirby, doing great work with this uh, with this entire roster of, of pitchers. Mm -hmm. We've seen the starters sort of evolve in the, in the, uh, the bullpen really coming on. Well, it's been interesting. You look at the roster construction in the field. You know, Coach Wazikowski has has liked to go either the transfer route or, or junior college. As Matt Moore will get the strikeout to end the inning. Trey he retired swinging, and the Boilermakers head to the bottom of the eighth on top, two nothing. Bottom of the eighth inning, the Purdue Boilermakers on top, two nothing. New man on the mound though for the Michigan State Spartans as Mason Erla's day is done. You take a look now at Evan Floor making his 24th appearance on the year. A 4-5-4 ERA, 36 strikeouts on the season. Trying to keep his team in this one after the Boilermakers finally able to break through in the bottom of the seventh thanks to the big man, Zach Fascia. Fascia with a big home run to right field. For the day, Erla officially seven innings, three hits. Of course, that big one by Fasha, the difference maker. Struck out five, walked three. 108 pitches for Wilson Erla. That's a lot of pitches. Only 65 for strikes. He was efficient early, though. He was, that's for sure. Got off to a great start and pitched a great game. Erla being showing bunch right away. Struggled at the plate today, looking to try and salvage it. And he will lay one down right back to floor, who will underhand it over to the first baseman for this first out of the eighth. One of the longest underhand tosses I've ever seen is floor. It's nearly on the line still. He, he knew he needed to get it over there quickly. It's like a long-range cornhole toss. Yes. But able to get it over. So now Ryan Howe will come back to the plate. Ryan Howe also struggling today. 
Cole McKenzie, the only one in the top four who's done anything, and all she's done is walk a couple times. Been a tough day at the plate for really for all of the Boilermakers. That's true. Tyler Powers has a single and been able to, to get a couple walks here or there, but really it's just it's the fascist swing that has been the difference in this game as you see the throw over to first from floor to get Milo B. In plenty of time, but I can see why he wanted to hurry it. Yeah, Milo Beam runs more like a gazelle than anything out on them down that baseline. One of the few guys in, in this conference where if he lays down a bunt with nobody on, you're like, well, this is probably a 50-50. Right. Good patience from Hal with the 3-1 count. You and I were talking about it a little bit earlier in, in one of our breaks, but this this game has had very a feel as this one is swung on and hit into the corner on the third base side by Howe, and he will be in for a stand-up double. So Ryan Howe able to make solid contact and put a man on scoring position. Fourth double of the year for, for the freshman Howe. Good, uh, good contact, great placement down that left field line. So now Skyler Hunter will come to the plate. There is some action in the bullpen for the Spartans. Hunter the switch hitter. And we're taking a couple hacks with that right hand. Check swing, but still going to be a strike. And as you see the swing there from Howe. And able to get in easily. Second base. I was saying before that hit, this does have a very similar feel to that Penn State series about a month and a half ago as this one's fouled back by Hunter. Where a little bit of low scoring, but the Boilermakers just able to find ways to manufacture some offense. Uh, that's just what you have to do in, in low scoring games like you say do whatever you can to get base runners and push them across it's not always going to come the way of the long ball like it did tonight that series a big one for Purdue as they try and build their resume for the Big Ten tournament get that record together as it, uh, as it should be the biggest thing about that series Purdue took games one and two like you said, one nothing in game one, two one in ten innings in game two, and then lost game three to weather. Yeah. So they take the series, but they lose a a potential win. Right. Against the last place team in the Big Ten, and you hope that doesn't come back to uh, to bite this Boilermaker squad that they're a game short and that game is a possible, likely win. Well, that just is one of those classic Mark Wasikowski games where you know, Purdue was just able to to out execute Penn State. Um, and they've been able to do that a little bit tonight as well. You know, obviously, you get the one swing of the bat, but it's the patience. It's continuing to get strong pitching on your side as well. And then you just weather the storm of Erla. And they have done a nice job of putting themselves in position to pick up a game one victory tonight. Rutgers in Ohio State, currently a half game up on the Boilermakers in the standings. That Ohio State series to finish the Big Ten play, looming large. As this one swung on, hit hard, line drive though to left. A good throw, and it's a double play. The old 7-6 double play. An incredible throw from Bryce Kelly in left. That was a hard Hit ball from Skyler Hunter, and that will do it for the Boilermakers. So it was a promising double from Cole McKenzie. And he gets doubled up. Beats him in standout play from the left fielder. For the Spartans, you see this one here. Yeah, how just uh, ranged a little bit too far off. A little bit, little bit aggressive there, but uh, no damage. We head to the ninth. Purdue up two to nothing. Top of the ninth. The Boilermakers looking to close it out. 
here tonight at Alexander Field. Matt Moore throwing well in relief for Trent Johnson. Looking to try and take care of business here in the ninth inning while Bryce Kelly will come to the plate off the midst of a tremendous throw from left field to double up the Boilermakers to end that eighth inning. And now he's going to try to do work at the bat and keep his team alive as he, he needs some offense down to their last three outs. It'll be one, two, three in the order for the Spartans. Bryce Kelly to lead things off. and two-thirds innings so far. A couple strikeouts. He's retired all five batters he's faced. And that one, as good of a pitch as you're going to see. Like you said, in a rhythm right now. Kelly trying to keep from going over. Two count as that one's outside. Nice job by Fasha to track it down. And one away as Kelly will go down swinging. Third strikeout for Moore. Moore continuing the deal. That's eight strikeouts combined between Moore and Johnson here tonight. And we've got a meeting, and that will that will do it for Matt Moore. And so it will be Bo Hostra coming out for the Boilermakers to close this one out. We'll step away. Purdue, two outs away from a game one victory here at Alexander Field. This is Hostra's 19th appearance on the year. 31 and a third innings pitched. That's one thing I like about him. He, he's definitely a closer, but mm -hmm. if you need him to go two or even three innings, he can. Yeah. Yeah, He's he, he was a guy who, when he was a freshman, you know, they even kind of toyed with him starting a little bit as that one. Chmielewski swings through. He actually got to start earlier this season during a, during a sort of team outing. Right. And so, you know, he's a guy who has some versatility to him. Purdue has been very fortunate in the closer department the last two seasons. Ross Lerner was here and was one of the best in the country from that closer spot. Um, and Bo, Bo has been tremendous. A little bit different pitcher, though, than Ross Lerner. Lerner was a guy who was just going to hit his spots and make it, mm -hmm. make it tough. But Bo, Bo doesn't mind trying to overpower you. Bo's coming through you. Yep. I don't think Leonard would know how to overpower. Well, he would know how. He just couldn't. Ross Leonard <laughs> was maybe 145 pounds soaking wet. Bo, not not quite the same build on Bo Hostra. Upstairs. Two and two. Hostra listed at 6'5", 235. That seems accurate. It does. It's a middle linebacker is what that is. He's free in the fall. <laughs> Coach Brown's here. <laughs> Nick Holtz looking for healthy bodies. As this one's fouled off of the rail post and out of play. So 2-2 two -two count. One out. And this one fouled back again by Shimaleski. Good battle by Shimaleski. This has been the MO of the Michigan State Spartans all night. They have battled. They just have not been able to, to win many of the battles. Three hits. 
on the day. One double. It's really the only threat. As this one is hit soft but foul and into the stands. Pretty strong wind now blowing from left to right. This one's fouled back down the right field line once again. Shemileski barely keeping up with that speed, but he is getting a piece. Chasing fastballs. Staying alive, that's what matters. Stay in the at-bat. And this one, he's not able to get much of, but it's going to stay in play, and it will be caught by Cole McKenzie in right field. So now two away. The Spartans down to their last at bat, their last out. McKenzie got a late read on that as well. He had to come in fast as uh, it looked like Ryan Howe decided early on that his right fielder needed to get that ball. Yes. Well, I mean, you got to think about Ryan had that double back in that last inning. He's tired. He's probably tired. They have a lot of running. That one just misses for a ball. As Marty Bakina, the last man right now for the Spartans, trying to keep them alive and in this game. Michigan State needs two runs to tie this up. As you take a look at that double up from the last inning. One one count, and that one. Akina swings through. Late on that one. There's another look at that fly ball to right field, and you'll see. I was calling it. Yep. McKenzie's first step was back. Had to sprint a little bit. Now we one and two to the batter. Just low. You can feel the excitement here as the. Purdue faithful know they are one what one away from a game one victory against the Spartans. 2-2. Two -two. And this one hit softly, floating out awkwardly foul. Ryan Howe laying out for it, but not able to get there. Hey, good effort. An excellent effort. Now he's definitely tired. Now he's yeah. Now he's definitely making Cole McKenzie come in on anything on that right side. So the count stays at two even. Bikina 0 for three. He's grounded out to shortstop twice. I don't think he'll be getting around early on Bo Hofstra. And this one swung on, hit well into the gap. Hunter chasing it and will pull it in in center field. So the Boilermakers, thanks to Zach Fasha's two-run home run back in the seventh, take game one, two-nothing. Big-time victory for the Boilermakers in their quest to make the Big Ten tournament.